Welcome back to the Twin Spires Jury. I'm Ashley Anderson here with James Scully and Darren Zakali to talk our best bets and fades of the week at Oakland Park for Red Bull Stakes Day. We'll also look at some races across the country and overseas. And I'm back from Louisiana where I was in town for the Risen Star where my best bet hit last week with Sierra Leone. Beat track Phantom James pick. Beat him by half a length. So what do you know? I was right. <laughs> 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 hey, congrats, Ashley. And not only was he your top pick, but it was my bet again. So you got it. Hats off to you. I'll have to do better ne uh, next time when I go head to head against you. Do you think you'll bet against him in the bluegrass? No. Well, not <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not uh, on record as being against him right now, but you know, it's we got a ways to go. Let's just see what happens in between. And Darren, I know. I know you're all about the price. I understand. He did get bet down. He was the post-time favorite, but you got five to two. That wasn't too bad. No, no. We we talked about the fact that uh, thought he'd be close to, to two to one, which he was. But uh, yeah, I, I look, I, I was impressed with it. It was a visually impressive effort. Um, I, I didn't think he had any business winning the race. They went very slow up front. He had to move extremely wide. He had to chase down a talented horse that got separation on the field at the top of the stretch. It was a it was a professional, a much more professional effort. Uh, it really spoke to his talent. Uh, you know, the naysayers are going to say, well, he did it over a sloppy racetrack and he might have just kind of really relished the off going. But I mean, let's make no mistake about it. this is a quality horse. Um, and he'll have to keep getting better. And, you know, giving his given his running style, he'll certainly need to navigate through some traffic at times and, you know, everything that comes along with being a deep closer. But, um, you know, right now, he certainly is at the head of the class. But if you wager on him in the Derby future, you had to take six to one on him. And I mean, if he runs a good second in the bluegrass, he might be six to one in the Kentucky Derby. So, um, you know, a little bit light for my uh, for my taking in the future wager pool. But I was very impressed with the performance. Well, we've got I agree with that. I think six to one might be a little bit low, but uh He's definitely moved forward. I mean, that was a better performance than his Remsen. He's only run now three times. He's got a lot going for him and uh, doesn't look like longer distances will be any issue either. It'll be good to see him on a fast track. So hopefully we get that in the bluegrass. But this week we have one Kentucky Derby prep. It's at Oakland. It's the Rebel Stakes and the winner gets 50 points. We'll get to that soon. But Darren, first, let's start with you. What's your best bet of the week and where are you going to play that? Yeah, I'm going to head to Gulfstream Park. Um, you know, I, I don't uh, necessarily just gravitate to the big races if I don't have the strongest of opinions. And my best opinion comes in a second-level allowance event in race number 10 at Gulfstream on Saturday over the turf course. Uh, I really like Ocean Club here coming back off the layoff since uh, early la late last summer, I should say, over at Del Mar. This horse was beaten 20 lengths when last seen when trying dirt uh, for the first time since breaking her maiden. Obviously, things did not go well that day. That was a good field that day with a couple of next out winners. But this horse was a really good second behind Anna Zett, who's one of the leading Philly and Mare turf runners in the country. Her turf form is sensational. She's got good speed. Uh, she can go to the front and wire a field. She's shown that she could stalk and, and pounce all right off the pace as well. Tom Proctor, 22% coming off of this type of a layoff. I just happen to think that this is a very, very talented horse. I guess the knock here would be first race off the layoff. She's got maybe some bigger assignments coming up down the road. And is she going to be fully cranked for this? And I merit, I, I do say that that argument is not without merit, but uh, working well, Proctor knows how to get them ready off the bench. And uh, I just happen to be a fan of this Philly. So for me, my best bet of the day is that Gulfstream race number 10, Saturday, the five ocean club. I got to ask you, since you're Doppler Darren, I didn't look at the forecast, but this is on we're turf. We're good. Hang on the turf? We're okay. good. Yeah, we're good. It, it looks like bright sunshine for South Florida all week long. James, what about you? Where's your best bet? Uh, number five, Pepper's girlfriend, eight to one shot uh, in the fifth race at Oakland Park on Saturday is my best bet. And this is a Philly, three-year-old Philly that uh, in her career debut in December, she missed the break. Uh, past rivals belatedly in the stretch going six furlongs stretched out the two turns last time Pepper's girlfriend did and there was no beating the winner of that race Honor Cat had everything her own way on the lead at even money she won by five plus lengths she's in the honeybee the grade three honeybee later on Saturday's program that was a really nice winner 
Uh, Pepper's girlfriend is is since six, you know, broke better, had a much closer trip the second time out, and she really offered a sneaky middle move. She rallied past four rivals to be a clear second at the top of the lane. In the last jump, maybe last two jumps, she got edged for second in like a four horse photo. That that uh, fifth place on paper will only help her price, I think, because I thought that was a real uh, move forward by this Donnie Von Hemmel trained filly. And the other thing I really like about Pepper's girlfriend, Ashley and Darren, is that I don't think this is a strong group. Uh, I consider this race for my favorite against uh, when I initially looked at it because I don't like any of the chalk in here. So I'm going to look for Pepper's girlfriend to keep advancing with a maiden special weight victory in race five at Oakland Park on Saturday. What's your best bet, Ashley? I'm taking it to the big race, and I have a feeling there might be some debate here. <laughs> but I'm going to go with number one, Carbone, at 15 to 1. I was a little surprised the morning line was that high. This is race 11 at Oakland, and so I've got a few arguments here. I know Timberlake is 6 to 5 on the morning line, but he's – unproven at two turns. I know he's got these great workouts. Brick Cox talked about him down at fairgrounds when we met with him. Look, the workouts are very eye-catching, but he finished eight lengths behind Fierceness when racing at two turns for the first time in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Then Fierceness came back, finished third in the Holy Bull. It was pretty unimpressive performance. And so I'm looking to play against him. I think the betting public will be pretty in sync with Betting Timberlake, that was a terrible pun, but I had to throw it in there. <laughs> and I'm going to go with Carbone as an early pace setter because the track bias, if you look at burst net PPs, those E-types are winning at a very high rate here. He's picking up Isaac Castillo, who's a 28% winner at Oaklawn, and Steve Asmussen, a 23% winner with horses that were beaten as the favorite in their last race. Now Carbone was seventh by several lengths in the Southwest on a muddy track. He'll get a fast track unless the weather forecast is incorrect. So I'm looking to play against Timberlake here. And Darren will mention this later. We have a promo, winter money back offer. If your horse finishes second or third, you'll get your money back on your first win bet in this race. So I'm going to take a shot here at 15 to one. Might not get that price, but certainly a lot of the money will come in on Timberlake here. Jay, yeah, I, yeah, I I don't think he's going to be 15 to one. I think you, you brought up the relevant point. Uh, he caught a wet track. He was a nine to five favorite. He was bet down to nine to five favoritism off of his first two races, including a two turn allowance win by open lens in a second start. So, I mean, you can make the argument. He just hate, he, he hated the mud and didn't like the track. Like you said, he's going to get fast conditions and he's going to show speed from uh, the inside post. So he's eligible to get a favorable trip on the front end. Um, I, I don't fault you at all for trying to pick a uh, beat uh, a horse like Timberlake, who's a little bit inconsistent as well, uh, Darren. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I don't know how good Timberlake is yet. Um, you know, I know he has a win uh, in the in the champagne over fierceness who didn't fire that day. That was a big figure over a sealed sloppy racetrack, which always raises an eyebrow for me. Um, the Ellis Park race, obviously, of West Saratoga, he ran extremely well. But this Breeders' Cup Juvenile honestly left me a little bit flat. And he's coming back first race as a three-year-old. You never really know how they develop over the next three, three and a half months. He's always been a good workhorse. So the workouts for him, I take with a bit of a grain of salt. I'm more interested in a horse like the other Asmussen, uh, Dymatic, who's coming in off an improving effort where he just broke his maiden and looks like the type of horse that could continue to move forward. But whoever you like here, um, I almost made Timberlake my, my play against because – I, I just think the price is going to be way too short. And I, I'm just not sure wh how, how good he is just yet. And that's a good point about the worst because he trained brilliantly for that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. You can see it on paper. He's three to one on that race and people are betting him off that work tab. So uh, as well as the, as the champagne wet track performance, I'll mention Northern Flame as well. Ashley is a horse that I thought was a little intriguing. Flame away. That was your first crop sire. I was, yeah. <laughs> also, Steve Asmussen has four wins in the Rebel. Brad Cox has zero so far. And Steve Asmussen's last win, 2019 with Long Range Toddy, who was a long shot in that race. So maybe we get something similar here. All right. Well, we've talked about potentially standing against Timberlake. James, what horse are you fading at a short price aside from potentially Timberlake? I'm going to fade number six, West Omaha, the seven to five morning line favorite in the grade three honeybee stakes. Uh, this is a filly that 
was a non-threatening second to Alpine Princess in December's untappable stakes. That rival skipped the next race, the Silver Bullet Day, and I thought that West Homa Omaha really caught a short group of rivals that weren't that good at that time and was flattered by the competition in a sense. One thing for sure that happened in that Silver Bowl day was that her speed ratings dropped five points from her previous two-turn effort. Got a little bit of concern, uh, you know, whether she is as good at two turns as one turn right now. And the other thing I'll mention is that um, – um, I just, I, I, I'm just not going to take a short price with her off of just that one race. Uh, I thought that the number one Alice Look was a very good alternative. I think she's getting class relief. I thought she ran against much better competition in her last two starts than uh, even Wes Omaha was facing in her first two stake starts. And I'm going to try to beat Wes Omaha, Darren, at short odds in the Honeybee. Yeah, Alice Beach on the inside is actually one of my my leans in the day for the reasons you said. I think they're going to get aggressive and send this filly. If I remember correctly, I think she was supposed to be entered into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and scratched out of there. Uh, she was training really well going into it, coming out of the Alcibiades, coming out of the spinaway. I, I don't know just how good these fillies are that she's running against. So I, I do like Alice Beach quite a bit uh, in that particular race. My fade does also come at Oakland. It's an allowance race in the middle of the card, entry level race number six. Uh, I'm against Sun Thunder here, guys. This is just the type of horse that I always try to beat. Late closing plotter who finds ways to lose races. He's burnt cash in each of the last couple of starts. Last time out over a sealed good track, I, I get that they didn't go that quick and he had to make a big move and then kind of flatten late going the extra 16th of a mile. But... I mean, he really had no excuse two races back, I, I thought. If, if he's going to not be able to run down the competition when they go 46-4 and four there, I don't know what type of a race it's going to take for him, what type of a setup it's going to take for him to get there. There's a couple of quality horses in here that have a bit more early speed than him. So for me, Sun Thunder at a short price, given his running style and the way that he just continuously comes up short, as a short price, he's a play against for me, especially in the multi-race exotic. I agree with you. Oh, sorry, Ashley, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I was going to lost seven straight and hasn't won since breaking his maiden New Year's Eve of 2022. So I like your yeah. point. And that maiden win came out on off track. I really thought those last two races were disappointing. He was the big favorite, and I expected him to win both times. So, uh, yeah, I like that fade. Well, I'm going to fade number four, Ain't Life Grand at seven to two. Pretty lukewarm morning line favorite in the Razorback handicap. This is race 10 at Oaklawn. And this is a five-year-old coming off a seven-month layoff for Kelly Von Himmel. And she's over 15 this meet. Ain't Life Grand is also over two against Graded Stakes Company. He had a third last out in the Cornhusker and then was seventh in the Traverse back in 2022. And his trainer's just an 11% winner with horses coming off these long layoffs. So I'm going to try to stand against this, like I said, lukewarm morning line favorite. I see some price horses in here that I like. Frosted Departure at 15 to one, Speed Bias at six to one, and Notary, who was going to race at Fairgrounds last week, now racing here. I think they have a shot. There's a couple others I'd include too if I'm playing horizontals, but definitely going to stand against Ain't Life Grand. A lot of speed in this race too. Um, I was actually, when I was looking at this race, looking for uh, maybe a potential closer that I, I could build some uh, vertical exotics around. And I thought OP Firecracker was interesting at a price to maybe get a piece of this. Not sure if he's good enough to win. He's only two for 21, but he's 15 to one morning line. And he's coming off of three, what I thought of pretty good efforts in a row, and he's going to get a good setup. So I thought he was the kind of horse that you could build exactas and tries around that a big number. Yeah, and I thought eight like Grand had run since July. I mean, it looks like to me it's almost a setup just to get him back going. He's going to win some stakes. If he stays healthy, he's going to win multiple stakes at probably at Prairie Meadows this year, the Iowa bred. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to take a short price in this spot with eight like Grand. Well, let's talk about some promos, including that winter money back offer. So what do you got, Darren? Yeah, winter money back this weekend. Uh, we're going to feature Oakland Park on Saturday. We're actually doing a little bit of a double dip at Oakland with a couple of promos. Uh, going to give uh, a lot of bang for your buck if you're wagering uh, down in Arkansas this weekend. But the uh, $10 winter money back is going to include races 9, 10, and 11 at Oakland on Saturday. If your horse runs second or third, you're going to get that money back and it gets paid out within minutes of the race becoming official. We also have the Road to the Kentucky Derby Profit Boost, a 15% boost on your winnings for win, exacta, trifecta, and superfecta wagering. And, of course, this Saturday, Oaklawn Park is the racetrack of the day, not just the Rebel Stakes. All races at Oaklawn Park on that day will be eligible 
for the profit boost. So be sure to be opted in and take part in that. And also don't forget, of course, our two hit it and split it. Uh, we've got $2,500 up for grabs, Turfway Park Friday night in their late pick five. And we have $2,000 uh, for the fairgrounds on Saturday in their late pick five as well. There's a bunch of other promos also, a lot of stuff on that offers page right now with Twins Buyers. I love that profit boost, the whole card. I, I thought when I initially saw that, that was just going to be for the uh, Rebel Stakes or the, the Riz and Star Stakes but, uh, last week. But uh, I like that you get that opportunity, that 15% uh, boost on all races. Yeah, we just print the money and hand it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Darren, let's stick with Turfway. What else are you watching for this weekend? Yeah, there's uh, an interesting race. Um Race number eight at Turfway Park on uh, on Friday night. Uh, interesting for me because I'm co-owner of a horse in the race uh, who's won three in a row uh, in Rivoli, who's a big number on the morning line. We're going to find out, I guess, what we have with him right now. But uh, we're running into a horse that uh, I was waiting to come back. And, of course, he comes back against us. Uh, Suncroft for Brad Cox, who uh, literally ran a hole in the wind in his debut at the end of the year last year for Judmont, uh, son of Arrogate out of a state thirsty mare, Princess Karen, who was a stakes winner. I mean, he could not look any more impressive. I think he ran nine or a nine and a half on the rag is in for that debut as well. Uh, just an eye-catching performance. He's making a second lifetime start. And he's one of those horses that uh, right now could be any kind. Uh, we don't know if he's a synthetic specialist, if he could run on anything. But uh, definitely excited about this horse's prospects moving forward as uh, he uh, takes his first start of the year at age four. So looking forward to watching Suncroft uh, probably beat me in race number eight on that turf way on Friday. I don't think he's going to be just a synthetic specialist. I mean, Brad Cox brought it idiomatic through turf way last year, ran her a bunch of times uh, over the Tapeta before she started winning all the grade one races on dirt. Uh, that's a good, uh, I'll be watching this how Suncroft runs. My what else is going to be, I'm going to give the uh, $20 million grade one Saudi cup on Saturday morning uh, or early Saturday afternoon, a uh, plug to inspire some uh, members can bet on the Saudi cup and all the races uh, from uh, uh, overseas, got the Saudi Derby and some other good uh, races on the undercard. The Saudi cup itself, it's held at a one turn mile and an eighth distance. You've got Breeders' Cup Classic winner, Wada Barrio, Pegasus World Cup winner, National Treasure, uh, Pencil Grade One Pennsylvania Derby winner, Saudi Crown. Got a five horse contingent, a really formidable five horse contingent from Japan, including a. Uh, 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 Ushba Tesoro and Derma Satagatke. So it should be a, just a terrific race. Uh, I'll mention Saudi Crown. He's a colt that was really a late blooming three year old last uh, late summer, last fall. And he was always the type that I thought would be better as a four, four year old for Brad Cox. I really liked his comeback performance, a five and a half length win in the grade three Louisiana. He did it completely in hand, I thought. And I think if he keeps moving forward off of that performance, he's got a big shot in the Saudi Cup. Once again, I do think the mile and eighth one turn distance will benefit him as well. I don't know about 10 furlongs per se for, for him at this point in his career, but uh, I'm going to look to play Saudi Cup if the price is right, Ashley. Saudi crown and the Saudi, the Saudi crown. Yeah. Don't let me get it all confused now. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the overseas racing. We talked about the Derby and Oaks prep here in the U S with the rebel and the honeybee, but we've got the UAE Oaks, a group three race on Friday awards, 50 points to the winner. It's a small field of six and the top choice is a star guitar Philly. I think it's Manomic gold. It might be I don't know. I just watched the rates replay yesterday and I don't know if I'm saying that name right, but let's go Manama Gold, who won our last two, including the Cocoa Beach Stakes by more than nine lengths, facing a lot of the same rivals in this race. She's a full sister to Ova Charge, who just won the Mardi Gras Stakes at Fairgrounds, and her trainer, Fauzi Noss. Has one has two in the field, and he won in 2022 with Shahama, who transferred to Todd Fletcher's barn, finished six in the Oaks, and then won the Grade Three Monmouth Oaks as well. The last two winners of the UAE Oaks have made it to the Kentucky Oaks field. I don't know if we'll get Oaks winner yet out of this field, but the interesting horse, of course, like with Star Guitar being the sire of a filly here, who's a really good filly in this field, but also a Justify filly who made her first start last out, was beaten by Manama Gold, but might take a step forward here. Justify has obviously been doing very well as the sire this year. You were just down in New Orleans and got all the star guitar love down there. Yeah, the right? fairground, <laughs> so I'm not surprised you pulled that one out. <laughs> 
I, well, that's all the time we have today for the Twin Spires. Here. We head to twinspires.com or the Twin Spires app for all of those promos. We'll be back next Thursday with more Best Bets and Fades.